Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and I have here an Amazon Kindle Fire, which has been rooted, and the stock software that Amazon ships with it, which is based on Google Android, has been replaced with Cyanogen Mod 7, which is a custom version of Android, based on the Android open source project, uh, Android version 2.3. And uh, the reason to do that is it gives you a more standard Android experience and lets you uh, more easily install apps and um, have more control over the device and uh, customize it a little bit more. And I want to show you a couple of things that you can do once you've done that. So for instance, uh, right now I'm running a PlayStation emulator called FPSE, uh, which runs pretty well on the device. Graphics look pretty good and you can uh, control things pretty well. It uh, works fairly well with uh, role-playing games, strategy games, the sort of games that uh, uh, work with on-screen controls. Since this is a game that really was designed for uh, use with a joystick, I find that um, racing games and things like that are a little bit harder to, to run in emulators. But uh, assuming you have um, an original copy of the game or uh, some other rights to, uh, to play emulators, things like the PlayStation emulator work pretty well on here overall and you can play in uh, portrait or landscape mode. In landscape mode you can see the controls are sort of overlaid on the screen. You get a smaller, sharper picture if you switch to portrait mode, but you get uh, the buttons are larger and might be easier to access. So overall, um, playing PlayStation games works fairly well. You can also try Game Boy games. So here's a copy of um, Mario Kart for the Game Boy, or Game Boy Advance. And again, it works pretty well. Uh, like I said, racing games are a little bit harder to control when you don't have physical buttons, you're using on-screen buttons instead. But the uh, frame rates are, are pretty nice. Now you can install some of these applications, whether you root the tablet, well actually you pretty much have to root, but uh, you can install the, some of these games, um, well, you have to root to, to download them from certain app stores, I suppose. Um, but even without rooting your device, you can install unsupported applications. But uh, they're a lot easier to run in CyanogenMod Mod uh, because there are fewer restrictions on where you can get your apps from and you don't have to uh, make a lot of changes to the device. So uh, I just wanted to show you, though, that some of these games work actually quite nicely on a device uh, that has been rooted and... Uh, the Amazon software has been replaced with Cyanogen Mod. Um, aside from playing emulators, you can play, of course, standard Android games that are purchased from the Amazon App Store or downloaded from the Android Market. So, for instance, uh, Great Little War Game is a um, turn-based strategy game that was on sale this week for just 10 cents from the Android Market. And using the Android Market in this device, I went ahead and downloaded it and um, installed it on this device. And you can see it works pretty well. The um, games that are designed for Android really are going to run better than emulator games for the most part. The graphics are really optimized for these displays. The uh, controls are really designed to be touch-based. Um, but I just wanted to show you some of the things that you can do. Now, other things that you get with the Cyanogen Mod software is this customizable home screen and application launcher. You can also replace this with a different app launcher if you want. But you can see I've got widgets showing uh, the weather or quick access to certain settings on the tablet and I can arrange shortcuts to uh, uh, preferred applications and so forth. So overall, using Cyanogen Mod is much more like using um, a stock Android installation on a phone or a tablet. It doesn't feel as much like the, uh, the Amazon Kindle Fire out-of-the-box experience anymore, which is uh, not bad for a $200 device. Um, there are some downsides, of course, to installing Cyanogen Mod, though. Uh, for instance, you're not going to be able to stream video from Amazon Instant Video. Um, because it does not work with a uh, rooted device, and I've tried using OTA Root Keeper, which is a, uh, a tool that lets you unroot and reroute a device, um, sort of, on um, or at least convince some of your applications that you're not rooted, and that didn't work properly here, so I just wasn't able to stream Amazon Instant Video. Netflix Video did stream just fine, uh, and video quality looks pretty good. That said, there's no audio. So you can't actually listen to anything from Netflix, Pandora, music, movies, anything. Um, so if you do decide that you want to try and install Cyanogen Mod at this point, you uh, should be aware that you're going to be getting an audio only or a video only experience for now. So for playing games, reading the web, and so forth, it's pretty good. In terms of uh, performance, I found it to be um, actually very similar in terms of benchmarks to the uh, standard Android experience, um, or standard Amazon experience, which is to say that uh, running the SunSpider benchmark, the scores were pretty much the same when I used the um, um, 
scores were pretty much the same when I used uh, SunSpider with Dolphin Browser HD, whether I was running the stock Amazon software or Signage in Mod 7. I ran the CF Benchmark tool, um, and literally the, the scores were within five points of each other. So benchmark-wise, you're not going to see a lot of difference. But overall, I feel like um, the, the operating system might feel a little bit uh, smoother and more responsive with Cyanogen and Mod, which is not surprising given the uh, the tweaks that the Cyanogen and Mod team tends to put in here. Another thing that's much easier to do, you can do this on a rooted device, but it's much easier to do on a device running Cyanogen and Mod, is change the keyboards. So you can see, uh, first of all, we've got the standard Android keyboard here as opposed to the Amazon keyboard, but um, you can install other keyboards such as TouchPal and just use these without having to change your file permissions and uh, manually copy files and folders and, and other things. It's, uh, it's much easier than um, the instructions that have been posted on Lilliputing and XDA developers for installing um, an alternate keyboard when you're using the stock software. So for instance here I can either tap out letters or I can just swipe my finger across the screen to enter uh, text and uh, that's how TouchPal works, and overall the experience is um, better, I think, on a phone than on a tablet, but if you use uh, a finger to swipe across the screen as opposed to a thumb, which might not be able to reach, it works pretty well and makes entering text pretty quick. Um, web browser works uh, pretty well, so really everything except for uh, audio, I think, is, is working pretty nicely. Um, and uh, yeah, so at the bottom of the screen you can see because there's only the power button and we don't have home, search, uh, menu, and back buttons, we actually have persistent uh, a toolbar here that shows up on the bottom in portrait or landscape mode with those functions and it works just like you would expect it to, including uh, the ability to uh, tap and hold to get recent apps. Um, eventually we're probably going to see um, Cyanogen Mod 9 on here. We've already seen some early builds of Google Android 4.0 Ice Cream Sandwich and Cyanogen Mod is also based on Ice Cream Sandwich and that's going to make it even um, uh, easier to, uh, to do things that are designed for a tablet that doesn't have physical buttons because Ice Cream Sandwich doesn't require physical buttons. It has persistent on-screen buttons. But uh, the CyanogenMod Mod team has done a pretty good job with the HP touchpad, the Nook Color, and other devices of um, making tablet tweaks and they work really nicely on the Kindle Fire. Uh, looking forward to getting uh, audio working, but other than that I'm uh, pretty impressed with the uh, experience here. Um, in order to undo the process, you can find steps at lilliputing.com. If you want to go back to the stock Amazon software, you can do that. Uh, there is the possibility that you could uh, make some serious problems with your device, so you should, uh, you should be aware of that, that you're probably going to void your warranty here. But if you can restore from the stock, re, uh, stock Amazon Kindle Fire software, um, you can probably return this to Amazon and nobody would be the wiser. Um, so as long as you uh, follow the instructions carefully and closely um, for installing CyanogenMod or uninstalling it, um, everything should go pretty smoothly. And um, yeah, so that's a, a quick look at some of the things that you can do with CyanogenMod on the Amazon Kindle Fire. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing.